Welcome to this video from the Carleton University Library on evaluating the bias in a source using the CRAAP test. We all can have a strongly held point of view or personal belief that greatly influences our thinking on a given topic. This can be considered a bias. When choosing sources for our academic work, it's important that we think critically about the point of view of a given author or organization because their bias might inform the purpose of their work and therefore the suitability of that work for our own research. But identifying an author's or organization's point of view or bias can be challenging. Why? For at least two reasons. One, because sometimes authors, including organizations, do not explicitly state their biases. And two, because we may have to know something about our topic to identify different perspectives. However, by thinking both about authorship and point of view, we can begin to understand bias in some cases. Let's take the example of two Canadian think tanks, the Broadbent Institute and the Fraser Institute. Both are influential research organizations that contribute to the development of Canadian society but they have very different biases or points of view, and thus the information that they produce may very well have a different purpose. To assess purpose and therefore bias, we will start with two searches. One, we will look at the About Us pages on both Institute websites, and two, we will also look at the Wikipedia entries for both organizations to find out more about the people involved. These two searches overlap the authority and purpose criteria, but can give us more information to help us think critically about the potential biases of both organizations. We will start on the Broadbent Institute website at www.broadbentinstitute.ca. We will choose About Us in the top navigation and then Ed's Vision in the drop down menu. On this page, we can read that the Broadbent Institute is named for Ed Broadbent, a former leader of the New Democratic Party in Canada. And by reading the brief statement under Mr. Broadbent's video, we learn that he self-identifies as a social democrat and thus has a distinct political bias or point of view. Now let's look at the website for the Fraser Institute at www.fraserinstitute.org. We will click on About Us in the top navigation. And on this page, we can read that the Fraser Institute engages in independent and nonpartisan peer reviewed research, as stated in the bottom right hand corner of the page. This suggests that the Institute does not have a particular political bias. Now let's look at the Wikipedia pages for both institutes. Here is the Wikipedia page for the Broadbent Institute. This page contains some of the same basic information that we found on the Institute's About Us page. For example, that the Institute was founded by Ed Broadbent, a former leader of the New Democratic Party, and that it has a particular political bias. It is progressive and socially democratic. The page also identifies other individuals who we could investigate to further understand their political views and thus potentially the bias of the Broadbent Institute. For example, what can we find out about Kathleen Monk? An online search leads us to this page for the Ernst Cliff Strategy Group. And we can read that Kathleen Monk is a principal of this group, that she has worked for former NDP leader Jack Layton, that she regularly comments on the CBC program Power and Politics, and that she supports issues such as women and equity. This description suggests that she might be progressive in her political views and a social democrat. This is the Wikipedia page for the Fraser Institute. This page suggests that the Institute might very well have a political bias, conservative and libertarian. And in the information on its history, we learn that it was founded by Michael Walker, an economist, and T. Patrick Boyle, a senior manager at Macmillan Bloedel, a large forestry corporation in British Columbia. Another online search leads us to this page on the Fraser Institute website. 
we learn that T. Patrick Boyle was a corporate controller and pivotal in developing the founding principles of the Fraser Institute. And Michael Walker is an economist who focuses on the examination and use of competitive markets. This information does not suggest a political point of view, as does the description of Kathleen Monk. As a result, we would need to do more reading, perhaps more reading on the Fraser Institute website, and discussions of Michael Walker's economic works in order to gain greater insight into the political perspectives of these two individuals. While we cannot cite Wikipedia as a credible source, in part because we cannot identify the authors of these pages, this additional information can be the basis for asking further questions about the purpose and point of view of the work being done by each organization. And we can compare the research and or statements made by each institute on social issues, such as COVID-19. For example, Broadbent Institute writer Andrew Jackson thinks that the recent speech from the throne that contained policy statements on the pandemic and an economic recovery includes a lot for progressives to like, such as pharmacare, green jobs, and affordable housing. Whereas the Fraser Institute has reposted an article that appeared in the Globe and Mail in late October that raises concerns about the risks to federal finances that may come with any additional spending related to the pandemic. In both cases, the overall purpose of this information appears to be to contribute to national discussions about a serious public health issue that has social and economic implications for Canadians. However, with further investigation, we may also find that the purpose is to influence public policymakers and persuade them to consider taking actions that support a particular political point of view. So remember the bias can be hard to identify. You may have to think about other crack test criteria, such as authority, in addition to purpose, to determine if information from a given source is strongly biased or not. And your investigation will take time. This is the end of this video.